Hello, hey everybody. Wonderful to see you all in the chat. Hello over there and special welcome to the members of the channel. If you do want to show your support that way and join the membership, there is a link in the video down below or there will be shortly. Plus Nancy will share a link to join memberships on the channel because uh, I don't know why, but when you have an iPhone, if you're watching in an iPhone, there's no join button up top. I don't know why, don't know why, but we will resolve that, Throw some, throwing some links up on how to join the channel in case you want to. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Natalie, and this is Scientology Life After a Cult, where I recap the Scientology news that has the internet buzzing each day, and I'm going to share with you my 35 years in Scientology and how I left with three generations of my family. Also throughout the week, I do interviews with people in the ex-Scientology community, the protest community, and so on. So when you do hit that subscribe button, make sure you set the notification bell too, so that you hopefully get notifications when I go live for those interviews. And be sure to hit that like button on your way in to help us get those notifications out. It is very helpful. And I'm so incredibly thankful for all of you that take the time to do that, truly. We are going to talk about a bunch of stuff, people, a bunch of stuff. We're going to be checking in on the protests in Hollywood that are going on. There's some new sign tech going on and a claim that Scientology does mass. What? No, I don't think so. But we are going to talk about that. We're going to hop over to a couple new places too where some protests are going on. And then we are going to get into Mike Render's interview with John Atak, which was just released early this morning, including a statement and comment from Miriam Francis. We are going to get to that. So hang tight, hang tight. And thank you so much. I want to really thank my mods who were here this morning. Nancy's here. Dip Me and Glitter is here. And my Tony is here. Always appreciate all of their help. If you have a question, be sure to put question in all caps and then have your question follow. That'd be super, super helpful in helping to find those questions so that we can answer as many as we can. We're just going to kick it off by taking a look at something that Jessica Palmadessa did yesterday out front of the big blue buildings when protesting Scientology. This is something that she shared to Twitter. We're also going to look at a clip from it as well, but you got to see this because it's the blue buildings, right? Right off of, um, there's L. Ron Hubbard Way, and then I always forget what this street is right here. But uh, it's usually when you think of Scientology, the big Scientology sign, and she left a message out front. Let's take a little look. There's no volume on it, but you can see if she zooms in, that is the number that if you need help leaving Scientology that you can call. I do believe that's a number to the Aftermath Foundation. And I thought it was a lot of fun that they did that and put it right in front of the blue building. There's your billboard. <laughs> and then take a look at, I'm going to share a clip from Jessica Palmadessa. It's from her stream. And Confident Chris were out going around the blue buildings. And another protester drove by and used some some megaphone tech to spread that message and amplify that help was available or is available. Check it out. There you go. I don't know, but it's right on the front nine, of the thing. Nine five six seven five two eight four eight four. Nine five six. Nine five six. Seven five two. Seven five two. Eight four eight four. Eight four eight four. That's the Foundation. They can help you if you're trying to leave the Sea Org or Scientology. Because Scientology is a cult. There we go. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. Love it when things just come together. That is a great way to do it. Now, thankfully, finally, we have another episode of Mini Streets. Confident Chris does these mini street skits with the mini streets. And if you have not seen them, I think you're going to fall in love with it just as much as I have. Looks like Mini Streets has a new outfit. I'm not sure that I've seen this lime green hoodie. I think I'd call that lime green, almost a fluorescent green, probably lime green. Anyways, take a look at many streets in front of the Hollywood Test Center. What happens if they scatter around or not? Man, everybody's sick and tired of y'all. The whole bullet bar is sick and tired of y'all. Isn't it great that even many streets can get security to disappear and run off? You see, you see what it came down to? We got vans now over here. We got vans now over here. Second I get here, they run back inside. The whole... Boulevard is sick and tired of y'all. The whole boulevard. It's what they do. 
They run away the second I get here. Like I said before, I'm gonna end your religion. I'm gonna end it all. <laughs> I just love Mini Street so much. <laughs> right? Isn't it? Isn't it hilarious, Kelly? It's just so funny. It's so funny. I just love it, and he's, I love that he has new outfits. Honestly, I think that really impressed me. All right. DOA was also out there doing some protesting and the few members of the LAPD joined him to let him know what the deal was and give him a bit of a warning. But something they say made me go, what? What did you just say? You did not just say what I think you said. So we're going to watch this and then we are going to discuss, my friends. We will discuss. I had asked him about the a lot of times because I knew this was going to arise. Right? Yeah. Um, and they said that they practice every day from what they say 9 9 a.m to to 1 1 and then they have like a break and then they yeah that's what they i mean so so basically i can't i can't be out here at any time uh before nine and after three that's what they told us i mean you guys i know you're just the messenger but this is this is this is funny I, I can't help but laugh at that. Like, I mean, like I said, you're not just come say this is what they do. Yeah, it's almost as if I'm work. If you guys are working for them and not for us, we're in the middle. Okay? We're in the middle. We're not picking yeah. guys. Yeah. Hey, let's let's. Hey, hey, they can't hear us both talking at the same time. He said that's what they told us. They can't hear us. Yeah. So now who are you going to him or me? So you're well, saying that that's what they told you. You can't yeah. say, so I'm telling you it's not true. So now you're stuck in the middle. They're saying it's true and I'm saying it's not. That's so I don't know if you heard part of that, but apparently Scientology has told the LAPD that they, she used the word mass. Now that could have just been her word, right? Scientology does not do mass. Scientology does not do church services. They do do something called a Sunday service which is only on Sundays. In fact, let's just take a little look at it because they do, but basically what the LAPD is trying or Scientology is trying to do is say that uh, we're practicing our religious services like all day and night, except for lunch and a break that we take and dinner. And that is true that Scientology delivers their courses and their auditing, but they're twisting it to make it sound like it's actual church services which is kind of like, you know, that seems like a stretch. Because if you look at this, Scientology on their own website, tell, on their own website tells you about their Sunday service. That is the only religious service that is scheduled that they have. You can do Scientology courses and they can argue that, well, that's religious services. It's not. You're studying a course. It's not a religious service. And look at this. They even claim, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, that uh let's take a look so the sunday service blah 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 it consists of reciting the creed of the church a sermon based on the writings of the scientology founder ellen hubbard congressional group auditing and prayer this is such bs i can't even stand it it's all pr it's all smoke and mirrors to make it seem that scientology is a valid re religion i was in scientology for 35 years the only time we went to sunday service is when we were made to because some vip or somebody in the community was coming and we need to make it look like it was an actual service they even have the section on the sermon typically addresses a topic to an important scientology principle or practice right then they do group auditing, which they do. They might be like, everybody stand up or look at that wall. It's, it's weird and bizarre, their announcement and their prayer. And I'm going to call BS on this right now. This is not a prayer. They call it a prayer. This prayer is not being directed to, to there's no religiousness about it. It's what they're making it sound like. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but in case anybody is watching and wondering about Scientology Sunday service, no. It is not a thing. It's purely one of the many things they do to have the appearance of it being a religion and delivering services. There's no mass or congregational service going on during the hours that they claim. So hopefully the LAPD will figure that out. Now, Mindy Willens was over at La Poubelle last night sharing some information with patrons. And uh, I would say it was pretty well received from what I saw. But take a look at this. Take a look at this. And again, this is Mindy Williams. Williams, Williams, Mindy Williams. Just take this with you. Sure, I'll take one. Sure. Hey, how are you? I remember you. Do you? Yeah. I almost walked in, but I didn't walk in, but I almost did not. Oh my gosh, you're so great. 
Thank you for spreading the word. Have a good night. Oh. So we're out here protesting them. The owner of this restaurant who harassed the James Doe's in court every day wrote a letter in support of him um, and said, like, oh, I know he's a rapist, but it will go easy on him. We just don't think that this restaurant should be. Um, oh, yeah. So going inside is like voting with your dollars for these values. And I know you guys aren't, but that's what we're out here for. Thank you. Yeah, I you're so that. welcome. Have a great night. Wow. Thank you. So Danny Masterson is the rapist. He's convicted. Oh, yeah. This is where he did the deed. This is. I just love that. She educated so many people. When you watch the whole video, it just goes on and on with people that she spoke to and educated about why the protesters are out there and what the whole deal is and what the connection is to Danny Masterson and his crimes. So absolutely love that. Lupe, can you interview Mini Streets? You know what? I would love to. We should do that. I should interview Confident Chris and Mini Streets. That's a great idea. <laughs> I wanted to show you, do a little throwback. Let's go back a little bit in Scientology history with protesting. It is, you'll notice we don't see too many Scientologists themselves coming out. They do sometimes, but they're usually kind of stumble upon it and don't even know or understand what is happening. There was a time where Scientologists were used to be a bit more aggressive towards protesters. And not to say that's not going to still happen. I'm talking overtly, not just, you know, sneaking around following people or hiring operatives to do that. But this is from, this is from back in the day. This is Mark Bunker at the Blue Buildings in Los Angeles. But you got to see this. This is, this is classic, classic Scientology tactic where it sounds almost like they're trying to interrogate him. They're trying to find out what his crimes are. Because if you are protesting Scientology, you have crimes that you're hiding. You have things that you are afraid of. Check it out. Total freedom here. And that scares you. You don't want people becoming more aware and more free. And again, this was a long time ago. That's why it's so blurry. Why is that, Mark? What do you got to hide? Well, excuse me, Dan, but... Uh, Murder, perhaps? Something in your closet there? Yeah, I killed a guy once. Tell us about it. Uh, as a, a postal worker back in Wisconsin, uh, Mark Wartman, I, uh, I chopped him up into pieces and buried him in a ditch. Yeah, that's real funny, Mark. Well, you needed a crime, yeah. so, you know, check with Mark Wartman and see if he's still alive. Someday you'll be able to face it for myself. Really? Cool. Did you take time off from beating your wife to come down here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... It's laughable, but it's classic. There's even video somewhere floating around of Jenna Elfman. Is that her name? Jenna Elfman? She used to be on Dharma and Greg. I think she has a bit too in the new Walking Dead series, but where Jenna Elfman is yelling at somebody about being, you know, somebody who inappropriately touches children. That is the playbook in Scientology. Accuse them of all kinds of crazy crimes so that they admit to the one that's really going on. It's actually a tactic used in Scientology interrogations. Well, did you kill somebody? It's, it's a too gruesome is what it's called. So they'll throw something at you that is so out of whack with what you actually did that you're like, no, I didn't kill someone. All I did was cheat on my taxes or whatever it was. It's such a tactic. And just we had to visit that little bit of a throwback because the ridiculous is so great. Okay. Austin, we're going to jump over to Pearl Snappy. Pearl Snappy witnessed some butt smack tech over in Austin. I do believe, you guys tell me in the chat or the comments, that the, the, the person who does it, isn't that the guy who had the headphones on and got like really up in her camera? Was that him? I'm not sure. Reprise 53, yes, it's called the murder routine. That's right. You are totally right about that. Thank you for that. All right, let's take a let's take a quick peek here in Austin at Pearl Snappy. Just wait till I start coming out here with my own police officer that's escorting me and educating me security guards on the actual laws and my rights. That's fine. Well, I mean, my lawyer and the APD had something very different, and so did Travis County Sheriff. So we'll just get them all in there. <laughs> Keep your TRs in. You're off the rails. You're off the rails. Oh, it's so funny. At least he's having fun with it. I will give him credit for that, right? But that is a butt tech in action there, people. You saw it. And as Pearl Snappy was saying, there are their Scientology's hired security or it, it 
basically you guys heard we shared, I think it was yesterday or the day before about how sites were set on her that she was going to be detained and arrested for doing things that she knows not to be illegal. And in true Pearl Snappy style, she knows what the rules are. She knows what the law is and they're just not going to mess with her. They're not, they can try, they can try. Now declare Dave loves suppressive Sherry. They're one of the couples who who go and protest out of, uh, this is the one where it's confusing. It's the Greater Cincinnati Organization, but it's located in Kentucky. So wrap your head around that one. But they had an interesting interaction with a Scientology staff member who came upon them and had some questions for them. And it always cracks me up when it's like, are you just finding out about this? Are you just seeing for the first time that... And maybe they are. Maybe he has not seen protesters out there before. That could very, very much be it. But it does seem, too, that the staff members have not been briefed or told in certain organization what is happening with these Scientology protests. Check it out. Do you think children should be auditors? You don't think children should be auditors? I'm with me. I'm with my wife. I can't hear you. A lot of cars. Do what? It's a cult, sir. It is, sir. The IRS has granted you tax exempt status. The government does not recognize church as a religion, sir. It does not. In fact, the government is intentionally not supposed to by the First Amendment. Do you know what the First Amendment is, sir? Do you know what the Constitution is? Sorry? We're not protesting religion. We're protesting the abuses. We're, pro we're pro Exactly. Exactly. Protesting the abuses. But wasn't that interesting? And how to, his whole point that he tried to make, that no, we're, the government sees this as a religion. And uh, Suppressive Dave is right. You have tax-exempt status. And uh, no matter what you say, just like they tried to with the LAPD about Scientology having mass and these church services, that is just not the case. It is just not the case. We all know here that Scientology, that L. Ron Hubbard decided to make it a religion because you could make more money and there would be certain protections under that, especially with tax exempt status. So we know that. We know that to be true. Now let's go over to New Haven. I, I do not think that I've seen, uh, I don't think I've shared a clip from New Haven. Let's take a little look. There's some protesting going on over there down the street from New Haven's building they bought ages ago that just appears to be sitting there and rotting right down the street from where their existing organization is. Take a look. Over here. Oh, look, we got a car came in since I arrived. So, it looks like we got, oh, we got three cars, four, possibly four cars on Saturday morning. Wow. Shouldn't well, these people be, be on course? Yeah. Well, you know, don't know how many of these are staff and how many of these are public. I bet you these are all staff. It could be. I mean, maybe what? Three staff, one public. They got the yellow van there doing nothing. Yep, volunteer minister's van. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is uh, this is their uh, this oh, down there is supposed to be their ideal org, but it's been sitting empty for 20 years. Yeah, Whoa. and it's like, well, whatever, it's gonna cost so much money to renovate that thing because just sitting there 20 years and rotting. That's right, 20 years sitting there 20 years and rotting. And how interesting is it that that place should be full because aren't there 10 million Scientologists in the world? Aren't there 10 million? So I don't know why three or four cars are there in the parking lot. And she's right. They probably are staff members, which even that, how many staff do they have? Not much. That's probably why they're not renovating the building. Empty, empty, empty. That's what we see at Scientology organizations. That one was not a new and renovated building, but even the ones with the new and renovated buildings, they're still pretty much empty. Empty parking lots, like we don't have eyes, like we can't see. We can see cars coming and going. Nobody's there. It's empty. <laughs> okay, let's go look over at Portland where there. I just love the support and the coming together of people. And these guys declared they are brothers against Scientology. This was great and funny at the same time. Brothers against Scientology. Yes. 
against Scientology. <laughs> it's really short, but I just love it. Brothers against Scientology. It is amazing the number of people who stop and are like, yeah, they're, who tell the protesters, good job, thank you, keep it up, we don't want this in our neighborhood, or even share information that they have found out about Scientology, that they are learning, on mostly online on the internet, or that they've seen documentaries and other things about Scientology, and they show up and everybody trades information. It's absolutely fabulous. Let's take a look at Portland with MD Media. Let's take a little look at this and see what he saw. This is outside protesting in Portland. Where? Scientology traffics children. Scientology's a cop. Where's Bob Ferris? Ah, oh, that's the guy that comes into the door all the time. He must be getting here. Just be getting here. His bodyguard. Look at them, though. They got those window blinds open still. I wonder if they got closed a little bit later, but I love too. We got to not stop asking, where's Bob Ferris? Where's Phil Anderson? Where are these people? Where are the missing Scientologists? The missing C organization members that families cannot reach or be in touch with. DOA, in fact, was putting up some signs, I believe, yesterday, pretty much saying that, free the missing Scientologists. Where are they? All right, let's go look at Long Island. Liberty drove by. We shared news that in Long Island, Scientology paid $15 million for a building that they're going to renovate as part of their ideal org scam that they're doing. Buildings that are bought, renovations that are purchased on the backs of Scientologists who overextend themselves financially. All go towards these buildings so Scientology can have these big, beautiful buildings. It's putting lipstick on, the, on a pig. It's complete lipstick on a pig. Just because you have a big, beautiful building does not mean you are successful. But they seem to think that that is the case. But Liberty went and drove by so that we can take a look at the building that was purchased Again, this is in Long Island. Take a look. Okay, so here it is. Here it is, this big giant one right behind me. Let's see, see all these parking spots? That's all theirs. Big giant building right here. Big office building. It's closed anyway. That is what $15 million gets you in Long Island. That's just for the building. Now they need to do the renovations. So they're just going to continue to be hitting up Scientologists with more money, more money, more money. It's all about that. More money, more money, more money. It's all about the money. They want that money. All right. Let's, where are we now? Let's take a look at, uh, we're going to take a peek at uh, an interview that I did yesterday with Miriam Francis that was very enlightening. Love chatting with her. Love learning more about what it, what she's doing to raise awareness about children in Scientology, children growing up in the Sea Org, children growing up, being neglected, being abused. She has, she's such a voice. I refer to her as a voice for the voiceless because I really feel that. There are many people in Scientology who grew up, who went through a lot of this that still won't talk about it in large part because they're just not able to yet and deal with it because it was so traumatic. So I love that she is speaking about this, that she is getting out there, that she's using her voice. And I'm going to keep calling her the voice of the voiceless because that is how I feel about her. She's doing an amazing job, but here's a little peek at it. Link down below, plus it's right on my channel. It's the last interview that I did, and this is from yesterday. There is this expectation that these children should have, um, you know, grown into these super capable adults. Yeah. Well, you strip them of everything that they needed in order to be that way. Yeah. And not everyone, not everyone survived. Not everyone survived that experience. So, yeah, it's really, um, yeah, it's really, really tough. Yeah. So you go into, when these kids then go into the C organization, it's very much like, okay, this is, you know, what you've been, what you've been set up to do. This is what you've been trained to do. By then you're right. so well indoctrinated into controlling your emotions, into not having a normal reaction to things that would be deemed inappropriate in any other mm -hmm. setting. And mm -hmm. you're put into doing 
not even I, you know, not even adult jobs, things that never should be being done in Scientology or anywhere for that matter. She just did such a great job of sharing the experience. We really tried to focus on the experience of growing up in the C organization from a young age. And when you get a chance, go over and watch the full interview because I she just did an amazing job. And I'm just constantly inspired by her strength and her resilience because to experience what Miriam Francis experienced as a child at the hand of her own father, and then to have it covered up by Scientology, to have him hidden away, to not face the consequences of his actions, to have the whole thing brushed under the rug by Scientology and to grow up and come out later and not just seek justice but use what happened to her as an example and a voice to let other other victims of childhood essay know that they are not alone. She just blows my mind, blows my mind, the strength and the fortitude that it takes to do that. Oh, I got to stop talking about it or I'm going to start crying. Okay. Let's talk about this. Okay. Let's talk about Mike Rinder's interview with John Atak. We're going to look at a few clips. I grabbed a few things. You should definitely go watch the whole interview for yourself so that you have all of the information. I grabbed a few things that we are going to discuss along with the statement from Miriam afterwards. So let's take a look. Where are we starting here? Let me play part of this and then let's talk about it. So give this a listen. Have you ever covered up or in any way hidden a criminal assault upon a child? No, not and and not that I am in, in any way aware of. And I only give that caveat because I like, <laughs> there are thousands and thousands of things that have happened mm. uh, over the 25 years or so that I was involved or engaged in external mm. affairs in Scientology. And there are, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of documents and reports and people out there. And it is, of course, possible that something happened somewhere and I signed off on something that, you know, was insignificant at the time or seemed insignificant mm -hmm. that then resulted in someone doing something that then resulted in something like this sort of, uh, snowball effect but to my to my knowledge recollection and best memory i have never been engaged in anything that was covering up child abuse or child sexual abuse um in in the time that i was in the sea organization just okay so you heard that. John Atek had a few questions for him. It, it sounded as if, and I have not confirmed this with Miriam or not, that some of the questions were sent to John Atek uh, for Mike Rinder. But again, have not confirmed that with Miriam herself. So a few of these questions, some of them are, you can tell her from John, that he is asking of Mike Rinder. And so that was Mike Rinder's answer to the question you heard, which have you, have you ever covered up childhood essay or anything like that? The next question he asked them, is, he asks John Atak, asks Mike Rinder, is, have you ever criminally assaulted a child? Oh, wait, no. Is that the one we just did? Let's see here. He asked him a series of questions that the questions themselves were a little interesting. Have you ever criminally assaulted a child? No. 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 <laughs> no, I have not. Ever. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dream of such a thing. Exactly. I, John, I consider that I sort of criminally assaulted my children by having them born into the Sea Org. Uh, honestly, that is, you know, perhaps the biggest regret in my life. Of course. But I have never uh, laid a hand on a child. I have never engaged in any sexual activities with a child. I've never engaged in anything even remotely like that, hmm. ever. And let me go on record to say the same is true for me. I have I have four children. I have never spanked or smacked any of them. Um, I've only raised my voice to them a few times over the years. I believe that 
that there is a sanctity there, that children deserve to be protected. So that uh, John Atek asked the same question of himself and just wanted to let us all know that he too has never, never assaulted a child in that way. So let's see here. Let's take a look at another one. Let's see. Let's see. Here we go. He's, this weekend, she sent to me and emailed me and said that, that you'd made public a um, the LAPD report that she made. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes, I put it on. I put it on my um, on my blog. You can mm -hmm. go buy that. That report is not uh, secret. Yeah. And in fact, uh, the detective, when I was mentioning earlier, I spoke to him. He said. Look, um, would you mind taking that off your blog? Even though you had, you know, I know where you got this from. I think that we gave it to you. Uh, but, and, and in any event, anybody can just go buy it from the LAPD. But uh, for a reason that he gave me, he, that I don't want to go into here, he no, asked don't. me if I would be willing to, uh, either remove it or redact it for certain information contained in there. And I said, of course, if that's mm. something that you feel will be helpful, of course. And and you've now removed it, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That so that was in regard to the police report that was put on the blog. And that was something that was definitely taken issue with as well. And then he removed it. And that's Mike Rinder's response as to why he went ahead and removed that. So let's take a look at another question, see what they get into. Jerry Armstrong seems to think that I have a treasure trove of documents that I'm not releasing. Now, have you released any documents in the last three years since that happened? Um, okay. God, this is a... This is the when, thumb drive story, I think. Yes. Yeah. When, when I escaped from London in 2007, I downloaded what whatever it was that happened to be on my laptop computer at that time onto a thumb drive. Mm. I um, turned that thumb drive, I made a copy of it, but I turned it over the original thumb drive to the FBI in the first interview I had with them in 2010. Okay. Subsequently, there were some of those documents that um, I gave to Marty Rathbun and some other people who then published some of them, the, like some of the, the um, um, programs like on, on Chuck Beatty and uh, mm -hmm. Dave Turetsky and others just because I thought that they were so um revealing and important so that was in a, in the answer to when there's been this question of has mike rinder turned over everything in the documents that he had to the fbi and he explains how when he left scientology when he escaped in london he downloaded everything that he was on his computer to a thumb drive and he says that he gave all of that information to the fbi and other people as well who had left scientology Let's take a look at another question. One of the things that Miriam said to me was that she felt unseen and unheard. And I tried to reassure her that I've spent 40 years. You know, the first child case I worked on was um, the Lady case in July 1984, when I brought two new witnesses um, to the, uh, the, the mother's team in that case. Since then, I've worked on many child cases. I've, I've done my very best in La Sully's People of Peace of Blue Sky, there's material about the ranch in Mexico and scorpions. Um, I didn't want to do this. I, I'm a painter. Uh, I'm a novelist. <laughs> I'm a, a musician. But somehow I've spent most of the last 40 years doing this. I, I am retired, but only have a state pension because I have no savings. That's because this has been important, and I want Miriam to be reassured that there are people who care, and there are people who are doing something. So that's his response to that. And I'm kind of like, we'll address all the questions and we'll talk about this. 
we just got two more clips to get through, but I thought it'd be good to kind of like hear the, what the questions were and hear those answers. And again, I recommend that you watch the interval interview in full so you can see it in its full context for yourself. Let's take a look at this. Perhaps 4,000 slaves in Scientology. They should be our focus. And all of the crimes should be our focus. But these people are on a daily basis right now being harmed. That's why the Aftermath Foundation came into being, which was started by Luis Garcia and Aaron Smith-Levin, yeah? Uh, yeah? That's shorthanding, yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, and me. Okay. Because the reason it's called the Aftermath Foundation is because it was, the the effort was to get me and Leah both involved in it. And okay. we were the sort of impetus for it Anyway, I don't even want to get into that in great detail. Uh, yeah. Okay, the so the Aftermath Foundation started. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you were a, a, a part of beginning that. And, and the objective of the Aftermath Foundation is to help people to escape from Scientology and to help them to recover from Scientology. And a lot of people have been helped, and hopefully a lot more will be. Um, I, you know, I've known you for, what, three, four years now. Nothing you have ever said to me has proved to be untrue. Thank you, John. I, I appreciate that. That uh, I try to be as as absolutely uh, frank and honest and straightforward as I possibly can. I know that memories are uh, not necessarily accurate. I even memory is not the video beginning type, of my, no. uh, I, I even wrote in my book at the beginning, you know, the sleep deprivation that goes on in the C organization, particularly at the top, is horrendous. Mm -hmm. And it is endemic. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we hear a lot about the sleep deprivation. So, you know, maybe it does affect people's memory. I do not know. Let's take a look at one more thing here. Then we're going to read a comment from Miriam. To change things, uh, you know, I got in a lot of trouble for making a comment about keyboard warriors. And, <laughs> you know, I wrote about that on my blog, you know, when it, it's not, not that, um, hard to, um, whatever I wrote about it on my blog, but there are people that there are two categories of people in this world of former Scientologists or activists or ex-Scientologists or anti-Scientologists, however you want to categorize it. There are those who do the work and there are those who comment on the people doing the work. Mm. And a lot of, and that doesn't necessarily mean that the, the comments are bad. They no, can be often inc very incredibly useful, yeah. mm. supportive and helpful. And but they're, not the, yeah. they're not the people that are doing the work. Mm. And by that, I mean, actively engaged in doing things that change the circumstances or help the victims yeah. or expose uh, the crimes in some fashion. So I, I look to you as someone who has been doing this for longer than I have. All right. What do y'all think there? What do you all think? Let's pull up some questions. Vintage Mama of Three. Thank you so much. Again, the fake. He smiles, smirks, and laughs during this sickens me. I feel the fact that a new board member who is yet again trying to polish Mike's reputation is sickening. John Atak, if you don't know, is a one of the newer board members on the Aftermath Foundation on the board. Let's take a look here. Let's see. I just X'd out of that. So I'm just going to read it from, this is a comment that Miriam Francis made on this video. And I want to read her comment in full so that everybody knows exactly what was said in response to this. She says, this is Miriam Francis again, and it's, it's a comment under this video, which is hopefully still there. Nancy, if you could go check under this video and see if the comment is still there. I'm just curious if it got deleted or not. And let me know. 
Miriam says, my criminal case is against the predator of sexual assault, not Mike Rinder. At the time, 2017, I did not know that Mike Rinder could have any could, could have known anything about it because he told me he knew nothing about it. Your point on me being bullied by the producer into giving more details about the child sexual abuse that I experienced, then giving more details than I was comfortable with, saying that I exposed myself to that situation, so it's my fault? Are you trying to say that I, quote, pulled it in? Close quote. No. I should not have been pressured into giving details that I repeatedly said that I did not want to give. Any lawyer or law enforcement official would advise a victim not to give a public detailed description of crimes while a case, criminal or civil, is active. CCHR, and this is me now, CCHR is the Citizens Commission on Human Rights. It's a Scientology front group. CCHR operates under the direction of OSA International. Mike Rinder was Jan Eastgate's boss. I will be sharing some of, me- some of the many CCHR directives from Mike Rinder's personal documents. Carmen's stepfather was not convicted. He was not given a good behavior bond by police. Seems that the head of the intelligence arm of Scientology knew nothing about anything, but Mike Rinder's OSA documents tell a different story. Mike Rinder transferred my mother in 1988 while he was setting up the LRH Life exhibition. The update of the What is Scientology book occurred several years later. Yes, she did those paintings. That does not mean that her history and involvement with CCHR and OSA did not occur. The other woman was Sina Kamula, who was present when my LAPD police report was taken. Mike Rinder doxed her personal identifying information, including her date of birth, address, and phone number when he published my LAPD police report online and did not redact her details. But now he doesn't want to say her name? On the statement by by Mike Rinder, quoting the LAPD police detective in my case, that when he took my statement in 2017 that I didn't understand that I was a victim, then why did I do a police report in Australia in 2012 detailing the fact that I was a victim? Explain how that makes any sense. The only reason I had not reported to LAPD prior to 2017 is because one, a victim has to report to their local police of the area they currently reside in, which for me is Australia. Two, after the Australian investigation was completed, my case was sent to U.S. authorities and I was still awaiting an outcome from that by 2017. When you posted my LAPD police report online, were you being helpful then? And why did the LAPD detective contact you? It was because I told him that you posted my police report online and he called you to tell you to take it down. No, anyone cannot just go buy a police report in an active case of child essay. According to California California law, you can only receive a crime report if you are an authorized person such as the victim, the victim's representative, or as provided in section 6254 of the government code. Mike Rinder. You were not my representative. I never accused Mike Rinder of criminally assaulting a child. I have never asked that question nor made that allegation. Mike Rinder did cover up abuses of thousands of children for decades, but apparently that's all justified because the two of you believed it was okay. No matter the motivation to commit a crime, it is still a crime. What about the OSA drill that Matt Pesch described to remove victims and perpetrators outside of the jurisdiction of the committed crime? Who created the OSA drill? Mike Rinder's OSA documents contain orders, directives, and programs that Mike Rinder wrote long after Hubbard was dead. There's no doubt that my mother is a talented artist, but she was not lying when she told me that she was working for CCHR and OSA doing work against the psychiatrist when she flew to Los Angeles in 1984 and 1986. I said that the full story of what happened to the children remain unseen and unheard because the adult perpetrators continue to justify the abuses of those children. I did not say I did not say that my story was unseen and unheard. I think my point has been thoroughly proven. Stop twisting my words to support your narrative. And that again is from Miriam that she commented on the blog there. 
Okay, and it sounds like Miriam com- Miriam's comment is gone from the blog, so I'm glad that I cut and pasted it, and I have a copy of it here, but you just heard it just now. So let's get to your comments and questions. Karaoke Jen is saying, catching up on two times speed, Mike Rinder is using qualifying statements, which is used by those who are deceiving the interviewer. Such statements as, not that I know of, are key identifiers. Chris Ten says, Miriam was so composed and brave. I agree. I absolutely agree. Totally agree with that. CMBR says, Rinder never left. Nancy Drew says, Miriam is bringing the receipts. Love her. Mary Reno, love how both managed to flash their books too. (laughs) Gypsy Mimi, that being said, I don't understand his continued tone deaf responses to Miriam, Aaron, and even the new wave of protesters. All right, so as of 1046, so Bet CU says she can still see the comment under the video, so maybe it is still there. Nancy, you said you peeked and it wasn't there. Maybe you just had to scroll down a little bit more. So we'll double check that because it could very well still be there. Fizzy, can you please tell us about the new artwork over your left shoulder? Oh, that is a really cool piece that was sent to me by Angela. I want to thank her so much that she created. It's a multimedia piece and I'm even wearing the same shirt today, but I appreciate it and I really love it. All right, let's see. Hey, Carrie Ann, softball interview where they discussed the questions ahead of time. John tried to look unbiased, but failed miserably. Okay, a lot of you are saying you can still see the video, so that's good. Is Kelly Copter's comment correct? The video has been uploaded a month ago. So my understanding is that the video was, it was up, it was made public just early yesterday, but it may have been uploaded or done, I believe in February. And people are saying that the comment is still there. So more people are saying that Miriam's comment is still there. So I'm going to go with that. It is. And let's see, let's see. M71 says it was update. It was uploaded to discord only a month ago. Yes. And how many edits? Yeah, I don't know. Gina C, didn't ex Osa Frank Oliver say Mike Rinder was the top guy and he knows everything that's going on? I do believe that he did. Frank Oliver was someone who spoke out some time ago about Scientology and he worked with the Office of Special Affairs. And as I understand it, Mike's response to that and comment was there's so many things going on that he couldn't have possibly known about all of them. And that's his answer to that question. All right. Definite trouble source. Mike's way of trying to stay relevant. He hasn't contributed to the SPTV community in a long time. So he's one of those who is commenting and doing nothing. (laughs) I know. I thought that was an interesting too. There's those who do things and then there are those who comment on it. And they're, you know, the more that people comment on a message, you can get it out. That's how social media works is if you have a message and people are talking about it, that's a good thing because you want to get it out. And you want it to be shared and discussed and have open dialogue about it. S, I am not even, I'm not sure how to say that. Mike Rinder said, watchers are not doing work. As, as a watcher, I have attended Austin org opening protest, called the city to report permit violation, called Denver PD and stayed on the phone until they uncuffed Jay. Yeah, very much so. He tried to address the keyboard warriors thing, right? Remember but that came across very, very horribly. Tell me this in the comments and in the chat. Do you think that he did? Did he explain the keyboard warriors comment enough? And do you feel that that's, that's kind of like a, a resolved issue or still, still offended by that or upset about that? I'm curious how to, especially the many people who've never been in Scientology are taking that. On the happy healing train, sorry, but I feel Mike Rinder to be disgusting. And thank you, Beg. My my Tony's reminder, hit that like button on the video. Thank you so much for that support, everybody. And I would be thrilled if you hit the subscribe button as well to help get this message out. 
And Wiggy saying, as a narcissist, Rinder cannot live in a world which doesn't revolve around him. Laurie plays. Laurie says, I spent weeks doing a music video tribute to Mike Rinder. Of course, it's no longer available. <laughs> oh, that must have been when he was doing his, um, doing, uh, when he was going through treatment and raising money, maybe. Laurie, you're so creative and I absolutely love that. Laurie even made a little ditty for my grandson, Oliver, to use on his future YouTube channel. And by the way, Oliver, Oliver thought it was pretty amazing. So thank you, Laurie, again for doing that. Atkins in Texas says he could try this. I'm so sorry I hurt you, Miriam. Now I want to do everything in my power to help you. How about that? Yeah, that's a good one. Hey, Carrie Ann says he didn't touch on the keyboard warriors enough. He made it worse by his comment today. Lori plays. Good point. Why did he not cover the dogs and fleas comment? Well, I guess because it wasn't in the questions. <laughs> But that is a really good question, Lori. Yes, it is. Okay, and a lot of people are saying, nope, failed, nope, I'm offended that it was not properly addressed. Um, not the not the keyboard warriors or the fleaboard warriors, the dogs and fleas comment as well. Me and Taz says, Mike Rinder can't explain the weather. Nancy Drew says he did not explain it at all. He never truly apologized. I'm a keyboard warrior. He blocked in that chat months ago. Well, that's interesting. That is interesting. Pato says, OMG, he's crazy. He thinks we can't see through his BS. I'm late getting here. So caught up. So not caught up yet, but this attempt of gaslighting, this is gaslighting at its finest. Escaping Falcons May says he put his foot in his mouth there. Jennifer Marie Joyce, he laughed about keyboard warrior comment and then doubled down by implying commenters do nothing. Okay, so here's our Kelly Copter. I was sent a link to the video whilst it was unlisted. I don't know if I was being baited, LOL, but either way, I didn't take it. Absolute nothing burger in that video. Jane Poe says, I think Mike was trauma abused and also an abuser, but I think in his way he is trying to help. I would agree with that. He is, he, in his way, he is trying to help. Mike Rinder has done a lot to expose Scientology over the years. Nobody is arguing that or trying to take away from any of that at all, because that's all true. And he will no doubt continue to do that as well. What just would be nice, and I think the missing piece here, is in just using a bit, a bit more a bit more candor and empathy when it comes to victims of Scientology, especially victims of childhood SA. There's just better ways to handle that and to be more supportive. This is what I would like to say to him. I just think that it would be more helpful if you were more supportive of people who are lending their voice and putting their shoulder to the wheel. However, somebody does it. This is not a competition about who's doing more or who's doing less or that what somebody's doing, their efforts are, that that doesn't matter. As far as I'm concerned, anybody that shows up to watch any of this content is helping. When you like the video, when you subscribe, that helps. When you share the content, that helps. When you support the creators on the different channels of SPTV, that helps. And that is making a difference. We know this because we hear all the time from people who are leaving Scientology or who are under the radar but feel braver now to come out and be be open, at least with their family and friends, that they have left Scientology because they see and hear so many of the voices of people who've left Scientology and are speaking about it here on social media and seeing how much life there is after a cult and that we're doing well. Life will always have struggles and issues that come and go, but it doesn't mean that it, it's just, I think that anything anybody does, and I've said this before, if people come to if people come to my channel initially because it's entertaining, that's great. It should be entertaining. Along the way, you're going to learn some stuff about Scientology that you might not have known. You're going to learn some stuff about how what you can do to use your voice to reach out to your representatives to do something about Scientology as a cult if you feel so moved. Um, I just, I see so many people doing things every single day that has value. And I think in validating that and trying to create a scenario of, well, I'm over here creating all this change and you're just commenting on it and talking about it doesn't help, doesn't really help anything or move the needle forward. 
I think we can be respectful of what everybody does in terms of their work and whatever they contribute, whatever you contribute, hats off to you because it helps. Liking a video, watching, sharing, all of that stuff, like I said, all of these things matter and they make a difference. Every voice matters, every single one, and they do make a difference. Look at the videos we just watched, right? We got Mindy Willens outside La Poubelle educating people on their connection to Scientology and Danny Masterson. It's just every voice matters. It makes a difference. Uh, Mio Div is saying he just doesn't seem to understand that I'm sorry and I was wrong are complete sentences that would go a very long way. I totally get that. I totally get that. Mrs. Massey, at what time do you just keep making a fool of yourself? Mike Rinder keeps putting his foot in his mouth. Loretta, he is obviously so jealous of Aaron. St. Louis Scientology Audit. Hey, Lou. Why is Mike Rinder quoting LRH? Redefinition of a spectator. Oh, that's right. Did he? Did he? Yeah. We need to look up that exact, leave it to St. Saint, Saint Louis Scientology Audit. That's Lou Repetto, who is a highly trained auditor in Scientology to spot the Scientology in that, in that statement, in that video. Just a Northern girl says he's dug his hole so big by now, there's no getting out of it. Alyssa, that face he made was the same face Claire made in that aftermath statement. Juju Hall, from a metaphysical standpoint, those who lie often have problems with their throat, i.e. esophagus just saying. Well, I don't know about that. Maybe, maybe not. I, You know what? I just don't want to get into what causes cancer and what does not and that whole thing. Let's, I want to leave that to the medical professionals, professionals who know way more about it than I do. Melissa says, I'm not even against Mike Rinder because I think he does a lot of good, but he's just making it worse by saying that none of us are of any value. <laughs> I think that's a great way of saying it, Melissa. And that's true. It's, and I feel the same way. It's for me, it's, this, this is not about being against Mike Rinder. It is about, I, I like to acknowledge the good work that he has done and that he will do. The issue is in the communication and how these things are handled and how they come across as being condescending and looking down on people who are taking the time to be here and spread the message. People who watched Leah's show, who watched Scientology in the Aftermath, all of those people matter. All of those people who watched it and made it popular and supported it, and then it won an, an Emmy largely because of people never in Scientology who have taken the time to learn more about and be educated about the abuses in Scientology and support these efforts. That is, that's, that's a lot of people who are doing things to make a difference. And I appreciate all of you for doing it. I talk about it almost every day. It blows my mind. It's why I'm here because of the large, large number of people never in Scientology who are willing to stand beside people in the ex-Scientology community who are sharing their stories. So thank you all for that. You were very appreciated. Very appreciated. I want to be really clear about that. Don Holt says, Mike Rinder needs to hire a new PR person. Heard there is a person from Buckingham Palace that needs a new job. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Tamara H. As a never in, his answers fell short. Just apologized. Just apologize already. I'm offended as we are all trying to be here to stop the cult of Scientology. Kimberly's, Kimberly Sweet. Nothing like having a wolf in the hen house. Uh, he makes it seem like he's helping in words only. No action. Neuropsych. He seems to be full of narcissism. He cannot accept true reality. He has no empathy. Liberty says, just because most of us haven't started a foundation doesn't mean that we aren't helping in our way. There are many ways to help. 100% agree with that. 100% agree with that. Bo Beats, what do you think about him actually defending himself as opposed to the rule of attack, attack, never, def oh, attack, never defend. But he was interviewed, John Atac. So there's that. Uh, what do you think about him actually defending himself? Um... You know, Bo Beats, I'm not 100% clear on the question, but I, I think, you know, I mean, he, he's defending himself. 
I would agree that I don't think that it's helping is, is the thing. I just don't think at all. CK Raritan, thank you so much for that. This is an awesome compilation. Kudos, Natalie. Thank you. Cherry Pops, thank you so much for that. Every interview seems to make his ego bigger. Kimberly in Japan, thank you so much for your super chat. How can Mike give no credit to Aaron? Well, it's obvious how much Aaron has done for him. Why doesn't he try to admit anything? Well, there are so many receipts against him. I just can't understand. I think that is the million dollar question, Kimberly, that that I think many people are, are asking and why a lot of this falls, you know, just falls short. Chris Tense as a master of good PR, he is not contrary to what he thinks. And by the way, I'm reading the comments and I would read any, any ones that were in favor or, you know, pro that, that were supporting what Mike Rinder was saying as well. I've just not seen them yet. Uh, Gypsy Mimi, uh, Natalie, I think you perfectly summarized the Mike Rinder conversation for me. Well, glad I, you are welcome. I'm glad. <laughs> Time Traveler's Chest, the way he hesitated and laughed about who founded the Aftermath Foundation was telling that he did not want to give A.A. Ron credit. He gave himself and Leah credit, correct? That's how I took it. That's how I would understand how I felt the answer to that question was. Yes, that him and Leah were the impetus for it, for that, the inspiration for it. Victoria, he almost tried to apologize, but pride and ego won't allow it. Love and life. John A. looks bad now too. Less than helpful video. Total fail. Mike Rinder is petty and inappropriate. Immature. Nazi, those who do the work and those who comment on it, like what? <laughs> exactly. It's kind of like, this is how social media works. This is how YouTube works. This is how it works to get the word out. Before there was YouTube, before there was social media, it was, you know, what some call legacy or mainstream media. And that's what they do. They report on it and they comment on it. That's how you get the word out. That's how you spread that message. And last time I checked, getting the word out and spreading the message that Scientology is a human trafficking cult is doing something and is getting that word out. Kelly Copter, drop a like for Natalie and her awesome show. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. Chris 10, good question. How can the foundation be run with no empathy? That's a great question. Acupunk says, just stop justifying and minimizing. I get that. I get that. I totally get that. Susie G says, thanks for making so many good points. Natalie, let people contribute in their own way. I agree with that completely. I think people should be and do contribute in your own way. And that's why I always say it is not about, there are so many things that all of us can do from home, whether it's watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, whether it's financial support, whether it's reaching out to your representatives and questioning them about Scientology's tax exempt, exempt status, or whether or not they're familiar with the abuses in, in Scientology. Eisen, uh, Mike Rinder's ego and his envy about Aaron's success comes in the way when it comes to helping people. This movement is past him and he can't stand it. I get that. Lil Lil, one thing about this that makes me angry is that he has put Leah Remini in this by default. Thoughts, anyone? I used to respect this guy no more. Juanita, hey Juanita. It seems that Mike Rinder needs to take a step back, deal with the issues he seems has that he's not dealt with yet, because each time he makes a comment, he buries himself more and more. I hope he does for his sake and all. I would agree with that. And I'm a supporter of the work that Mike Rinder has done to expose Scientology. Truly, I am. And I'm a supporter of anything anybody is doing to expose Scientology. But it doesn't you can't then do stuff over here that invalidates other people helping or is condescending. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you guys know what I'm saying. It just, one does not, you know, good works don't cancel out how you're showing up today. And that seems to be the missing point and the missing connection for me in this, that you got to make the connection that this is about responses to people, to individuals, especially to victims of Scientology and childhood essay in Scientology that was covered up. 
Neuropsych says, just keep the attention on the people that matter. The nightmare for him is going down as a bad guy. <laughs> and I really hope that that doesn't happen, to be completely honest, because he has done so much to expose Scientology. And I know he'll continue to do that. And I would hate to see that his legacy be remembered as, you know, as that, these the keyboard warriors, these these negative connotations and whatnot that, but at the same time, I, I don't know what to do. I can't help them. I've shared my two cents on it, which is exactly what I just said. But for some reason, it just kind of seems to continue to double down on this. We've seen, you know, members of the Aftermath Foundation board also comment and then delete these comments that are very argumentative and attacking in nature to victims of childhood essay or people who just have questions that they want answered. They need to know there's a desire to understand what happened because for so many of these victims, they don't know what happened around them and they're just seeking an understanding and answers to make it make sense. That's something that literally Serge says all the time, make it make sense. We're just asking that you help make it make sense. It is not about rubbing anybody's face in it, right? It's about accountability and taking responsibility and it helps the victims, when they know what was happening behind the scenes, what was surrounding that, what went down. Beaky Bokey, Mike has made a difference, but we're trying to go further than he is willing to. Total ending of Scientology, pursuit of accountability, speaking the truth about abuse and no tax exempt. Absolutely. Pat Watson says, I think Mike looking for validation, which is crazy as he can't even validate Miriam's story. Amy says it's too late. He is now on the wrong side of history. So he's saying I should just give up the ghost <laughs> that he can make change. And, and that is something I have, I have faith in people and their ability to change because I changed. I changed my attitude, my viewpoint so much after leaving Scientology. But I do know I am recognizing that sometimes people just are who they are and their personality is what it is, good, bad, or indifferent. Jane Post says, sometimes it's about putting the hard work in. Look at Mike Brown and Laura FM. That was hard, but I think in the end, it was good for both of them. I would agree. And for those who don't know, Laura FM and Mike Brown here on YouTube did a live stream where there was some beef there. There were some issues and they talked it out and they got onto the other side of it. And the both are better because of it. Because it's not about it agreeing with everything that everybody says. We are all individuals. Even in the SPTV community, you can see that. We are all individuals with our own personalities, with our own passions, with our own stories and experiences. And though many of those experiences are shared, many of them, they're still different. And we're still different people. We still have different points of view. But that is what gives a more well-rounded understanding at look on why Scientology is a human trafficking cult. So anyone who's doing anything to bring attention to that, I think is doing good work. Even if they disagree on certain points, not everybody, even in the SPTV community, we don't all agree on everything, nor should we, because what would that be? That would be an echo chamber. If you want to surround yourself by people who only agree with how you think and what you say, and all you want to hear is that bouncing back to you, you can do that. You can have that, but there's not going to be any growth. There's not. People, I, people can disagree with me. In fact, I've even told the Moz, if someone disagrees with me, that's fine. That comment can stand. You know, cruelty and hate, we're not going to tolerate, but you can disagree. It's okay to have a different point of view. There should not be a threat about that. And diversity on a board allows that board or that foundation to serve more people in the community. In the community. You can just help more people. Mary Reno, Mike Reinder, even got a few swipes in it. Rabbit, who tried to help Miriam get answers to her questions. That's true. Rabbit over at Down the Rabbit Hole News did an amazing interview with Miriam. I do believe it was the first big interview about this that came out. Uh, Melissa Harris, Mike Rinder is not too late. Okay. Get your head out of your butt. <laughs> M71, narcissists cannot change. That is true. We know that to be true. Capital call out. Thank you for the reminder. Hit the like button and it would help a ton if you subscribed as well. I appreciate that help. Thank you. 
Glenda says, it doesn't matter what Mike Rinder says or does, it will never be enough for Aaron's followers. All this infighting is not doing any good for the cause. All sides want that cult ended. That's true. But I think the difference here, Glenda, is, and you know what? I'm not going to speak for everyone. I'm going to speak for myself as a member of the SPTV community, as a member of the community of anyone outside of Scientology who wants to take away their tax exempt status and end Scientology. Because I don't think the abuses will stop until Scientology is ended. And I don't see this as, this is not infighting. I think calling it infighting is a way to try to stop what I see more as the push for questions to be answered. But I do respect and I do hear your opinion. Um, and I, I would disagree that it doesn't matter what Mike Rinder says or does. I think that's kind of the whole point is what he says her, or does and the way that he does it is not is not resonating with a lot of people. And I think it's safe to say it's not resonating largely with people who've never been in Scientology and for people who have been victims of Scientology of the Sea Org, especially when it comes to childhood essay. But I do want to thank you for that and making that comment. Let's see. Grammy Boo Boo, I'm still catching up on the stream. Just need to say Tom Cruise thinks he's the only one to handle it right. So does Mark Mike Rinder. That's true. Tom Cruise, if you get into a car accident, you better hope he is nearby or a Scientologist is because they are the only one. And for me, when I hear things like the only one, we are the only ones doing this. We are the only ones with the answers. We are the only ones making a difference. For me, that is very, that is, that is not inclusion because there are a variety of people in multiple different ways who are doing something. And there is so much value to that. And that is something that I feel is recognized in this broader community. Because I see the SPTV community is a community of anybody who wants to speak up and speak out about Scientology, its abuses, and what has happened. Anybody who wants to help amplify the voices of the victims of Scientology who are survivors, not just survivors who are now thriving because there's so much life after this cult and getting out of it. And so many of these voices, like Miriam, she could have just kept going with her life and walked away, but she has chosen to do something about it and help the children who remain in Scientology. Many have in this community literally surge. So many are continuing to bang that drum and raise awareness about it. And that is all very, very appreciated. It is not about sides. I don't, I'm very, I don't understand this point of view that there are sides, that there is a Mike Rinder side or an Aaron Smith Levin side. I call BS on that. I do. I don't think that that is true or accurate. That's not the reality. There are differences of opinion. I can have a difference of opinion with Aaron. Yesterday, Aaron and I did a video and we were talking about some of the more scandalous things in Scientology. Unfortunately, most of them involve traumatic and horrific passings of Scientologists. Some of them are very, very questionable. And we did disagree on one of them and how he sees it and how I see it. Not a big deal. Doesn't matter. He sees it one way. I saw it a different way. I totally wasn't convinced of something. Not a big deal. Totally okay. Does that mean we now have sides? No. No. We have a difference of opinion on how something is that we're looking at it. There are no sides. And anybody that says there are sides is creating division. And that is division. Disagreeing and having a different point of view or speaking on it and even having it get a little heated because emotions are valid. Emotions are okay. And sometimes they just need to come out. You can disagree in a community. It doesn't change that you're still a community. You don't have to agree about anything. But drawing a line and saying that whether it's this side or that side, that's division. That's infighting. But just having a disagreement and, and expressing it and saying, hey, I don't agree with you over there. This is my truth. And then having someone else say, well, I don't agree with you. This is my truth and reality on it. That's a difference of opinion. That's what you get in a community where free speech is allowed. That's what you get in a community where open dialogue is welcome. In a community where you are free to share your opinion. You don't have to agree with it. Doesn't mean that, you know, we're going to be over here letting you do it in a way that is extremely hateful, right? It's still, you can't have a discussion that way. But having an open discussion and dialogue within a community, even with disagreements, is okay. 
And remember this, you're talking about an entire generation of once children who grew up and are now adults on SPTV. And we were told we could never communicate. We were told we could never speak about Scientology. We could never share these abuses. We could never tell the truth. And now we are. Many are. And there's going to be upset and bump ups and all kinds of things through that process of healing. And those of you never in Scientology are such a huge part of that healing and holding holding space, creating a safe space for people to be able to do that. And that is so appreciated. But in my mind, like I said, that's not infighting. That's having a difference of opinion and allowing free and open dialogue to occur, allowing people to have a difference of opinion, even if I don't like it, even if somebody else doesn't like it. We can do that here. It's not an echo chamber. You can, you can support Mike Rinder. You can, you can post positive comments about Mike Rinder and the Aftermath Foundation. I have shared clips supporting the Aftermath Foundation because of the work they've done, the work that they're going to do. Does it mean that I disagree? I agree with everything they've done? No, I don't agree with how things were handled with Aaron on the board. I don't agree with a few other things. But does that mean that I am, th- there's no sides. It's a foundation there to help people get out of Scientology. I'm all for that. Anything anybody does to help that happen, I'm for. So what I think what needs to be knocked off is this idea and this narrative that's being painted that there are sides that people need to be on. And if you find yourself needing to be on a side, then you might want to question whether or not you're in a cult. Are you not free to communicate a contrary opinion or a difference? Is that difference not allowed on that channel? Are people not allowed to say it? I think they should be allowed to. Kimberly in Japan. Hey, thank you so much for the super chat. What benefits throwing Aaron under the bus? What does that do for Mike Rinder or the aftermath? Thank you always for keeping a safe place for everyone. This is so needed. Thank you so much for that. And I would agree there's not, it doesn't benefit. That's kind of the whole, the whole point. That is kind of the whole point. Buckled up buttercup, Mike attacks people and then complains about infighting when they respond. This is not going to attract we never ends or the younger gen. And that is an excellent point. Generations, each one has a different way of communicating. Very different. Very different in everything that they do. Sometimes there's going to be a clash because you don't see those things. But I think if we look at it, like, what can we learn? What can we learn from a younger generation? What can we learn from our peers? What can we learn from an older generation? Doesn't mean you have to take everything, right? Some things are just not going to work for you. Wiki says, I don't think it's infighting. I see it solely as a narcissist doing damage to a very important foundation and movement. He prioritizes himself over the bigger picture. Well, and there's also, again, this narrative and, you know, when people make comments about sides, that is where I think, too, you're kind of fueling a fire that honestly doesn't even really exist. People have differences of a point of view, and it will always be that way. To have an expectation that there's no disagreements, that there's no calling anybody out, that's not the world we live in. And often when you're called out on something, that's an opportunity to have more open dialogue. And it's uncomfortable sometimes because it is and it should be, but it doesn't mean that we should avoid it because it's an uncomfortable conversation to have. That's Scientology. That's what we were told in Scientology. Don't talk about it. You have to obey. L. Ron Hubbard is source. That is what you follow. What does L. Ron Hubbard say to do? And that is what you do. There's one way. There's one source. And I call BS on that. I don't believe that. I think that I can have friends who I disagree with on some major things. And trust me, I do. (laughs) I do. But you know what? Those are some of the best conversations that I have. Some of the most enlightening conversations I have ever had have been with people that do not agree with me about something. Because I learned something. When I can see it from their point of view, it helps me understand how they came to that conclusion. Doesn't mean I now agree with it. Sometimes I do and I change my point of view. But I want to understand how you got there and I can't get there unless we can have an open dialogue about it. Hold on. Fuzzy Peak Handcuffs, will you address the comment left by Kyle Brennan's mother on your live with Aaron last night? Um, I will have to see it. My apologies. 
I, I love that there's, I get to a lot of comments, but not all of them and not always right away. I try to get through them eventually. So I will have to find that, but thank you for bringing it to my attention because if there is one, I, I would love to address that. I will have to go find it. <laughs> Some of your comments are just really funny. Nazy, he's just mad that he's not the poster boy for the entire anti-Scientology community. He can't share. Could be. Maybe, maybe not. It's just so interesting, right, to just try and understand, like, where I don't understand that point of view. I don't understand communicating in that way when, let's be honest, ex-Scientologists, there aren't many. There aren't many. How many never in Scientologists are supporting the downfall of Scientology? Way more. So maybe we don't crap on those people, right? We have your support. You're here for it. You're all in. In fact, in the merch shop, I just created some merch wear, but Tony and I sat down and talked about how would we define a never in? And we both agreed that a never in is somebody never in Scientology, but all in on bringing down the cult. That's how, that's how we see it. So I put it on a sweatshirt <laughs> because that is how I feel about the people who've never been in Scientology, never been in Scientology, but all in on bringing down the cult. And that is a beautiful thing. Groovy Witch says Mike Rinder just misses the power trip in spotlight. The new protesters are stealing the limelight. Protesters in F SPTV are getting the masses motivated. That they are. They definitely are. Love and life. Love and life. Natalie is so balanced and fair. Mike Rinder needs some of her common sense. I appreciate that. And um, I would, I would, in a heartbeat, I would sit down and have a conversation with Mike. I absolutely would. And would love to do it on a live stream. Live. So it can't be edited. And, you know, what you see is what you get. JD from Philly. It is BS. I love Aaron, but this isn't about him. It's all about getting the truth out, shutting this cult down forever. I agree. That is what it's about. I completely agree. <laughs> Capital call out. Your channel is called Life After a Cult, not Life Living in the Cult. Yes, exactly. That's why I'm real weary of when I start hearing one, one, one. We are the ones. We are the only. We No, 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 no. You're not dragging me back into that. <laughs> Because this bitch can now recognize a cult when I see one. And that is just not happening again. I learned. I learned my lesson, not doing it again. And I'm very much a supporter of trying to have open dialogue. That's why I say it's like, it's totally, totally welcomed if you have po positive comments and things you want to say about the Aftermath Foundation or Mike Rinder, because they do do go good work and they will do good work. And like I keep saying, anybody who's here to expose Scientology, I'm here for it. I am here for it. Corn Freak, thank you so much for the super chat. Natalie, you're an influencer too. I'm trying, trying Olaplex. Oh, trying Olaplex after your video yesterday. Your hair is beautiful. Thank you so much. But I really have to thank Tony's sister who turned me on to it. She is a amazing hairstylist. Amazing. Because I was using crap before that, I'll be honest. But they, thank you for that comment. Anne, exactly. The only side is helping the children and elderly. I agree with that completely. And that's why in my mind, there aren't sides. We are all on the same side of exposing and bringing down Scientology. And if somebody wants to divvy up into factions, this entire community of ex-Scientologists and people never in who are all in on bringing down Scientology, that's them. That's how they see it. It's not how I see it. And I don't believe it's how it should be seen. They can do that. That's fine. But who's really creating division then? The minute that I say my side on the side of, that's creating division. Disagreeing, arguing, calling somebody out and emotions getting a little heated. That doesn't have to create division. That can bring people together. And as the earlier commenter said, we saw that happen with Mike Brown and Lara FM when they sat down on a live stream and they just had it out. And there was pain there and there was upset and they worked through it. And you know what? They both came through it and they were both better for it. And I thought it was really big of them to do it. That is the only side there is, the side of bringing down Scientology 
and helping the survivors of Scientology in and out of Scientology, honestly. Add on, hearing that on ATAC with Mike, Natalie, these are people interested in us to our mutual interest, interested in us to our mutual interest. They aren't telling you or I anything we need to know or could make use of. Pay them or block them. All right. Let, you guys just have so many great comments. I'm just trying to get to as many as we can. Don Holt, speak it. Can we, could could we do this as a mass? <laughs> love that. Love that so much. MJ says, I'm a cancer survivor and I'm glad I donated to Mike Rinder's treatment, even though I think he's wrong. Yeah, that's really good. And I, I think it's amazing. Everybody that contributed to his treatment as well. And I mean, it just, it speaks to who you are. That's who it's, that's what it speaks about. Oh, that's right, Stasia. And let's not forget Kelly Copter and what he said about her. So many new things come out that it's just sometimes hard to remember all of that. Lydia says, I'd support the foundation if they would remove that waiver that is seriously messed up. I'm a little familiar with that. Maybe it could be changed to just be a little bit more user-friendly. Thank you, Neuropsych. Say, I'm so proud of this platform. KY, yes, I don't regret donating to Mike's treatment as I believe in non-conditional giving. Thank you. Yes, I, I completely agree with you there. And that's why I think too that like I still have, e even with the things that are said, I, and I'll just say this, I, I still have love in my heart for Mike Rinder. I just disagree with some of the things he's doing and how he's handled it. But that, it doesn't take away from that. You know what I'm saying? And because the thing I've learned since leaving Scientology is love can only be unconditional or it's not love. And I love my children. And there were times when I wanted to kick them out the front door and lock it behind them, even when they were little. And I didn't because I love my children unconditionally and it doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't mean I don't get angry with them at times, especially when they were younger and outnumbered me. <laughs> but it needs to be Love should be unconditional. And I love what you said there, KY, because even support like that should be without strings. If you reach out and you give somebody something, let go. You gave it to them. If you gave it to them to help them or it was for them, let go. If you expect something back or you expect some effect to be created and to get something back from that, that's not giving. That's giving something, expecting something in return whether it's a favor, whatever it is. And that that's not true giving. Love what you said there. Love that. Literally, Cherry Bakewell, yes. I make my own mind up. Thank you. Yes, that's what everybody needs to do. <laughs> everybody can have an opinion, and I just hope you just remain open. Love and life. I love that name. Aaron's opinion on that disagreement is like what Natalie said about some things being normalized. He has some huge errors in logic on that disagreement, but yeah, just a disagreement. Yeah, exactly. We're going to see things differently. I would hope that we do. Honestly, if I talk to people in the ex-Scientology community, my fellow ex-Scientologists, let's say, and we don't have disagreements on certain things, I'm like, then we're not talking deep enough because we are all individual people. And it doesn't mean that they need to be major. And it doesn't mean that we can also hold those disagreements and still love each other and be a community. That doesn't change that because that's what family is. And I would say the people that I know, that I've gotten to know, that I've spent time with, even though it's been online and on phone calls and in, in messages that I've gotten to know in the SPTV community, definitely for me feels like family, that that's my family. And all of you as well. So many people who show up and continue to show support for my channel, I feel the same way. And, and in Hawaii, we call that Ohana. You guys are all just part of our big Ohana. And in my culture, in the Hawaiian culture, it's not about being blood related. It's about who you call, who you name is your family. And that is your family. And that who remains to be your family for good no matter what. Gina, thank you so much for the super chat. The word that keeps coming to mind is grace. Yes. 
All survivors deserve grace and love and will get it from me for what, for what, for what it's worth. Gina, thank you. You're so right. You're so right. Lisa, love, show and love, hip, hip, hooray. Thank you so much for becoming a member of the channel. Just so you know, it's the keyboard warriors who watch the shows, videos, and buy the books and merch. If we didn't do all that, then this movement would stall. Render has to be the most important in the room. You were completely right about people never in Scientology. There's way more of you here supporting that have never been in Scientology than there are ex-Scientologists in the community. And the fact that we can all work together on this and raise awareness and become educated, I think is amazing. Even if we don't always do, always agree, that's okay. I'm just really okay with that. Like Flying Mom saying, it breaks my heart when disagreements become a reason to cut off instead of grow. Exactly. It can be an opportunity for growth. It doesn't mean that you have to now both agree, but can we try to see how someone got to that conclusion? Can we try to understand what happened in their past that led up to them having that point of view? Because from their point of view and through the path they walked, I have disagreed with somebody on something, but when I understood how they got there, I'm not trying to convince them of what I believe. And I appreciate being understand how they got there and why they believe that. It may not change my belief on it, but I can appreciate that and even support their disagreeing with me because it just, it doesn't matter. I really don't know what I'm missing with that because I think people can disagree and still love each other. I see it all the time. And honestly, that's, I mean, that's what you're going to get here. <laughs> hip, hip, hooray. I love that. That's right, my Tony. Disagreement and make a world of difference in a great positive way. This is something we're definitely going to keep an eye on. No doubt continue to talk about because you guys are amazing at emailing me, natalie at lifeafteroccult.com and sending links and videos and timestamps. And I know that we'll probably get a lot more about this when it comes up and as it comes up. And uh, you know what Gina said? I know I shared this, but what you said about grace is so true. All survivors deserve grace and love and will get it from me for what it's worth. And even people who disagree, even Mike Rinder, there should be grace and love. It doesn't mean there's not going to be upset or disagreement. I have disagreement with some things, but I still have love there because that shouldn't go away. Sometimes that's hard. <laughs> Be straight up. Love and life. Mike Rinder honestly needs some counseling. He was born into a dysfunctional situation. He built up walls to deal with it. Now reality has bulldozed it. He's self-harming emotionally to deal. It's damaging. I have no information or idea if he's done um, counseling or anything like that. I actually, I am not aware of that, of, of yes or no. Duchess Diana, I, I am seeing someone who has experienced what M has. So Miriam has could take sides or someone in Mike's position. But for most of us, we really can't know. We fight for the victims. Exactly. Exactly. Willow's mom, Mike has been given quite enough grace. Thank you. <laughs> and I respect that too. I do. I do. CMBR, when the red flags lay in a growing pile, it's time to decide regardless of ill intention. Goodness. Yeah. Kim Roy says, Natalie, you would be perfect to interview Mike Rinder. You are so fair, but he would never do it because he can't control. Um, I don't know. I still have hope. And you know what? I have my own bias too at times. You know, I've laid in the bike a couple of times and for me, it really comes from a place of, I just think like if he could wrap his head around this, that the world has changed, not just leaving Scientology, right? And it's the outside world and the Scientology world. The world has changed. With each generation that comes after us, they change. They're more compassionate. They show more grace. It's more about advocating for victims and survivors and, and, and listening and being a, holding a safe space for somebody 
doesn't mean it's all unicorns and rainbows in there. This is my point of view. It's a safe space. If they need to be upset, if they need to cry, if they need to lash out in that moment, that's what's happening. And it's okay. It's okay. Because that has to happen. And again, people who grew up in Scientology were never allowed to do that. So of course we're doing it now. And sometimes it's going to get messy because there are so many other opinions and there are people not just from wherever they come from who want to stir things up and cause trouble for that purely for the entertainment value. That's why they're called trolls. And that's something to keep an eye on too, because they could be just run of the mill internet trolls, or they could be Scientology trolls. Their favorite thing to do is to create division. And you do that by drawing lines by, you know, or even people who make statements like, well, I only watch these three channels. Okay, you're welcome to do that. That's good for you. That's awesome. But the intention in saying that is trying to deliver a message in this echo chamber that, well, I only watch them because I'm not going to open my eyes to a different point of view. So you're kind of just not making a case there. Loretta, I supported the Aftermath Foundation, but the NDA seems culty. I've heard that. You know, I don't think I've read it in full, actually. I should do that. Malarkey, it's a bad look to keep talking about Aaron. Honestly, it makes them look petty and desperate. Aaron shut his mouth after giving his side. No, should be should be done. Move on. I would agree with that. It does kind of seem that things kind of calm down and then it's, you know, like Mark Headley posted some stuff and then Matt, Matt Pesh posted some stuff, both then deleted it. And there's been multiple statements and things in Mike's blog. And they can do that. They get to do that and have an opinion, even if it's one that I disagree with. But you also got to, then you got to take the hits when people have something to say about it. That's just by nature of putting yourself out there. It's going to happen. We cannot control what other people think, how they choose to respond. And if somebody ever chooses to take anything that I say out of context or twist it around, or it means something that wasn't my intention, that's fine. Because I know what I mean. I know what my intention is. I know what I'm saying. Sometimes that can be misunderstood. And okay, I, I can't control that. I can't. I can't. We're a growing channel with more and more people who are going to be tuning in and have different opinions. And I welcome that. But we can't agree on everything all the time. All right. We are, we're getting long on time here. Just do a couple more. Just so you know, it's the keyboard warriors who watch the show. Oh, I think we did that. Did we do that one? Watch the shows, videos, buy the books and merch. If we didn't do all that, then the movement would stall. Yes, that is 100% true. It would completely. The reason why this is so different this time and when it comes to exposing and protesting Scientology is because of the large number of people never in Scientology, but all in on taking down the cult purely because of that. Because we need the numbers. Elected officials aren't going to listen to a small handful of people, no matter how horrific our stories are. We need the numbers. We need the voices. We need the people. And you guys are here for that. And that's what you're doing. And it is amazing, which is why I love all of you. Here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to say Kimberly in Japan, number one, so cool that you're watching from Japan. I love that. Hippie Parade, thank you so much for becoming a member of the channel. Your support honestly means everything. And I've told you guys uh, next month in April, my Tony and I are going to be going to Clearwater to meet a lot of the people in Clearwater and protest Scientology. We'll keep you posted on those plans and dates, but just think mid-April. All right. We, I'm really behind and there's so many amazing comments and questions. I wish I could absolutely get to all of them, but we are probably not going to be able to, but we are going to talk about this again. Remember you guys email me, Natalie at Life After a Cult, links, timestamps, clips, and whatnot, and we will discuss it. We'll see. Uh, Miriam Francis and I are doing another, another interview. When did we set it up for? I think we set it up for in a week or so, maybe a little bit over a week. So there's that to look forward to as well. I've got some great interviews coming up on Monday. I'm going to be sitting down with Jenna Miscavige and we're going to be talking to her. That is going to be on Monday 
at 4 p.m. Central Time, Central Time, 4 p.m. Central Time. I will get out a notification that day. So please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. I would love it if you like the video. I cannot tell you guys enough, and I'm going to keep saying it every day. You keep showing up. I'll keep showing up. Your support means the absolute world to me, and it's why I keep showing up. Could, honestly, could not do it without you. I mean that. Uh, we will talk soon. Get, please get out there and have an amazing cult-free day.